Dominic Lesink is part of a new generation of Western farmers. This terminal here, they call it the Vario Terminal. A sophisticated onboard computer tells Dominic everything he needs to know. They'll show me the time, the amount of hectares I did, or acres, and how much fuel I burnt from each job. Dominic has the highly specialized skills required to run machinery that can cost up to a million dollars. It is complicated to learn it, but once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. Even Dominic will have a tough time keeping up to Dot, an automated vehicle designed to replace farmers. Isn't it time farming was reimagined? Say hello to Dot, a diesel-powered, hydraulically driven platform set to revolutionize the future of farming. Dot is the brainchild of inventor Norbert Bougeau. Why did you decide to build Dot? Uh, it was kind of a retirement project for me. I uh, was certain that uh, autonomous agriculture was coming around the bend. Norbert spent his career designing farm machines in Saskatchewan. At first I was looking for a method of just autonomously seeding. And when I came up with a platform that I could see could accept a multitude of different types of farm implements and even construction implements and mining implements, I got a lot more excited about it and filed for a bunch of patents and da 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 da. <laughs> the world moved on. Until now, high technology has been placed in existing farm machines to make them more efficient. One of the big things with the way it is, is big agriculture looks at just taking a tractor, removing the cab, keeping the engine, keeping everything the same, and then just creating or using technology to drive the tractor. James Benke runs the School of Agriculture Technology at Olds College. What Norbert's done is look at that in a different way and said, if we can create something that picks something up and pulls it or pushes it, and has multiple implement connections, you know, we're looking at it in a completely different way. Dot is made in a U-shape that when the implement's sitting on the ground, Dot rolls up to it and receives it and lifts it into it and handles a large amount of weight and fairly large implements. So the engine's in a different spot. There's not even a thought of a cab. No air conditioning, no stereos, you don't need any of that. So he's simplified it to, I would say, an utmost level that creates and forces everything to the implement, which is exactly what we want it to be doing. Dot can be pre-programmed or run like a giant remote-controlled car. You can control from two ways. Like, this is a remote control, we call it joystick. It's actually a bit scarier in the beginning of your practice. Yevgen Mikhalichenko came to Olds from the Ukraine to teach high technology to Canadian agriculture students. Here's actually our tablet uh, where we can control everything remotely, doing whatever we want with the dot. We can increase RPM, we can turn on, turn off the engine, we can turn on the hydraulic supply, just activate our spinners. Dot is turning heads in this quiet rural community. When we we're spraying this year out close to the highway, social media, somebody says, Wow, I just saw a dot. Bang, bang, bang. We just get this influence. People are looking. They're slowing down on the highway. They're wondering, What is that thing? There's no cab. Why is it happening? How does a cedar work compared to regular cedars with somebody on board? The planning is done um, ahead of time, and uh, with the proper planning, um, it can outperform a human in terms of operation within the field. The farmers are still very important, and they, they make the, the important decisions, but when it's monotonous things that have to be repeated very accurately for a long time, that's what a unit like DOT is, is good at. Like a self-driving car, automated farm machinery can make mistakes. On the farm this year, we had soil sensors installed in the fields. Uh, we aren't up in that seat watching, and it wasn't identified on our map, our obstacle map. So DOT drove, not over it, but clipped it with one of its sprayer booms. If you were sitting in that seat, you would have seen it, and you would have slowed down or went around it, but DOT didn't because it wasn't planned in our mission plan. 
dot is ringed with trip wires that stop the machine if it hits something. So this is our safety defense. So for example, if you stay just in front of the dot and it's running towards you, it's recommended to have the safety defense just around the dot from the left side and the front. His joystick comes with a kill switch. So let's imagine that you drive your dog and you need to have an extra emergency stop. That's it. So you don't need to think, okay, which button, like what uh, lever to push on, like you just need to click on the local e-stop. There's a multitude of things that would shut DOT down if there's any danger. The biggest benefit that farmers have though is you're not trying to take it down a, a eight lane highway. <laughs> so the, the levels of, of danger are much, much reduced compared to driverless cars. For decades, Western farmers have thought that bigger is better, but Norbert doesn't see it that way. As an engineer, it's been bothering me. Uh, Seedmasters produced the bigger drills in North America, and seven or eight years ago, we went up to 100 feet. But there's actually a lot of inefficiencies that come into play when you have something that large, because if one small element of that machine fails for a short period, the whole 100 feet is stopped. So a farmer would use three 30-foot uh, seizures on dot units to replace that. And with time, it'll outperform a 90-foot by quite a bit. Because of course it can go 24-7, day, night. We're starting to see farms look at focusing on the acres or the tasks that they have and doing them better, as opposed to just getting larger and larger. And, and it's that adage of, you can make the choice to do a lot of things but not do them very well, or you can reduce that, do the things that you can and do them extremely well and get quality out of it. DOT is attractive at a time when skilled farm labor is in short supply. It's a big problem in Saskatchewan. The farmers are looking for people all around the year, pretty much. They're looking in Australia or Germany or Mexico. It's one of the biggest limitations to food production in Western Canada. Dot can do mundane tasks while the farmer focuses on the big picture. I think technology has its place just as I still think human intervention and, and management has its place as well. So I, I believe it's somewhere in the middle in that. The technology has made extreme accelerated advances over the last few years, and so I would say there's benefit to that. I think it's just different labor. Uh, it's more trained, educated labor that the farms will require to operate and do the planning. There'll be less of those 16 to 18 hour days that farmers have to put in. You need to spend your time flying your drone rather than just uh, driving the dot. But dot uh, gives you an opportunity uh, to do it at the same time. Dot is past the prototype stage and ready for commercial production. The dot unit itself is a little more expensive than the same horsepower tractor, but the implements become actually cheaper because the implements don't need hitches and they, there's no wheels required for the implements. Next year we're going to be full tilt with that technology and we'll likely seed and spray most of our stuff autonomously next year in real time and real experience. So when you couple those two that we're using it on a commercial scale farm operation and we're leveraging it in the academic classroom as a learning tool, it's incredibly powerful. So this is a future, not a future, it's a, actually a, a present time. Dot may be the future, but its catchy name came straight from Norbert's past. My mother, whose name was Dorothy, and my cousins used to call her Aunt Dot. And I thought, you know, Dot, maybe that's the name. <laughs>